Hi, my name is Doug Broad, and I'm teaching at Nash Community College. Our course is EGR 250, Statics and Strengths and Materials. And for this video, we're going to discuss how to solve for the reactions for a set of parallel forces that are applied at an angle. So in this case, we're going to sketch the free body diagram. And this particular example in the text starts with a free body diagram. So just copy it to your own paper. Make sure that you've noted the points and the uh, loads and the reaction components. Then we're going to solve for each component, each reaction component separately. Uh, first, maybe by solving for dy by moments about a, but the order is not important. Then we solve by for ay about vertical equilibrium, and then solve for dx by horizontal equilibrium. So as long as you can write a formula so that you only have one unknown per formula, you're OK. Uh, solving the problem is not enough. Then we have to check to make sure that the work is correct, because calculation errors can occur at any point. And they tend to hide unless we do an independent cross check. We're going to combine the horizontal and vertical reaction components at D to solve for the reaction itself. And then we're going to solve for the angle of the reaction D. Then we're going to solve graphically to check the work, because graphical solutions are going to be just as valid as analytical solutions. This is the starting point for the problem. It's a truss, and to the on the truss is applied three loads sloping. Uh, there are three reaction components, uh, a vertical reaction component at A, a, and a horizontal and vertical reaction components in D. The left support can only offer vertical support. It's probably a roller. The right support, which is probably a pin, has a resultant that can act in any direction. To simplify the calculations, we're going to solve for the components. Since there are three unknown reaction components and three possible independent planar equilibrium equations, the problem is statically determinant. So here's our first uh, equilibrium equation. And you can solve the problem in any order. It doesn't matter what the order is. Try to find uh, an equation that's going to isolate one unknown. If you write equations that have two unknowns in them, you can't solve them right away. So the sum of the uh, forces in the x direction uh, only consider the forces and com reacting components that are horizontal. Some of the forces in the y direction, that's vertical equilibrium. And in this case, you only want to consider the, the load components and the reactions that are vertical. And then for rotational equilibrium, uh, we're going to see that that is not just force equilibrium. It's not distances. It's the product of distances times the perpendicular distance between the moment center and the line of action of the force. The three equations, uh, these are the three equations of planar equilibrium. The most common errors that you're going to run into in applying these equations are failing to follow a sign convention for each. So for vertical equilibrium, up is positive, down is negative. For horizontal equilibrium, right is positive, left is negative. For rotational equilibrium, counterclockwise, which is like steering a car left, would be positive, and clockwise would be negative. Another error that you might make is omitting loads and reactions. So make sure you count each part in each equation. Not considering the direction. That's if you're adding horizontal components, vertical loads, that's not going to work. Not in when you're calculating the rotational equi equilibrium, always for a single equation measure all the distances from a common point. So here for this particular problem, shortcut is possible. We we have a symmetry to the loading. So in this case, the the line of action of the force at B could be considered a an axis of symmetry. And on each side of that symmetry, we have a force equidistant from that axis and of the same quantity. In this particular case, we can combine those. So I can take the 1500 on the left 
and the 1500 at C and combine it with the load at, at B in order to calculate uh, the reactions. Uh, such a simplification can't be done if the distances weren't equal or if the forces weren't equal. They both have to be symmetrical in order to do this. Now, assuming I've done this and I've combined all the forces, just add them together and put them at B, then 6,000 pounds is acting downward at 60 degrees from the horizontal. So we have to calculate the horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal component is equal to the force itself times the cosine of the angle between the horizontal axis and the, for, the line of action of the force. So in this case, cosine of 60 is 1 half, so it's half of 6,000. Now, in the Y component, it's 6,000 times the sine of 60. In this case, I didn't bother with a sine for the angle, but if I had used negative 60 for the sine, then I would have gotten a negative result. Here, this is just the quantity, but recognize that Fy acts down. And so if you want to separately tabulate it, make sure that you either draw an arrow down or put a negative sign. So in this case, we're going to solve for a single unknown. We have several options. We could take moments about A to solve for dy, or we could take and we could solve for the horizontal forces. And there's only one horizontal reaction, so that would work. But we can't solve for the uh, some of the vertical forces right away because we have two vertical unknowns. Let's go ahead and solve for the horizontal unknown first. Don't worry about the position of loads when solving for vertical horizontal equilibrium. So the sum of the for horizontal equilibrium, negative dx, and that's applied to the left, plus 3,000, which is the horizontal component of the force at B, equals 3,000. So that means that dx is equal to 3,000. It actually acts to the left, and the answer is positive here because it was initially sketched to the left. Another approach to sketching things to make sure that the signs are always correct is to sketch the unknown arrow in the direction of positive sign. So if I had sketched dx to the, to the right instead of the left, then the answer would have been negative. When writing your answer on paper in freehand, add a left arrow or an explanatory note about the direction. So next, we're going to uh, look think about the uh, take moments about A to solve for the vertical uh, reaction at Y. Now, we can simplify. We don't need to worry about um, dx because dx runs through, the line of action of dx runs through point A. And since we can move that force to point A by just going straight along it, we don't need to think about that because it's zero distance from point A. So even though it's 30 feet away from point A, that distance is not the perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance between the line of action of D and point A is zero. Forces whose lines of actions run through the point have no moment about that point. So in this case, we've got some of the moments about point A equals zero. So the perpendicular distance between this force, which is a vertical force, and this point is the horizontal distance. So 30 dy, and I'm, I'm putting that in positive because it's going to cause a counterclockwise rotation about point A. Whereas 6,000, and here I'm just using the slope measure because I've already got a direct distance here. So this is going to cause a clockwise motion around point A. So simplifying that gives me the fact that D sub Y is 7. So the moment arm is measured perpendicular to the line of action of the combined force at B. So next we're going to solve for the reaction at A. Uh, remember not to worry about the position of loads and reactions when computing the vertical and horizontal equilibrium. 
So sum of the forces in the vertical direction equals zero. So negative 5,196 pounds, which is the downward reaction of at, 6, at B, or the downward load at B, plus the unknown reaction at A, plus dy equals zero. Now it's important here, even though we're not solving for dy, that you include it in the equation because now a vertical reaction, a vertical equilibrium equation has to include all of the vertical components, known or unknown. So 5,196 minus dy, we're simplifying it, equals 5,196 minus 1732. So the upward reaction at A is 3,464 pounds. So now we're going to combine the reactions at D to get the force, the combined force at D. This is not necessary for the problem, but I, I think you need to know how to do this. A pin or structural member must be able to resist not just the components of the force, but the force itself. And the components involves right triangle trig. The Pythagorean theorem states that uh, the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the, of the short sides. So d sub x squared plus d sub y squared. Take that sum and take the square root of it. In this case, 3,000 squared plus 1732 squared is equal to a sum that we take the square root of and get 3,464 pounds. When we calculate the angular reaction, that's going to be the inverse tangent of the vertical component divided by the horizontal component. And signs do matter, but you're not going to be able to know whether it's up to the left or down to the right. So you're going to have to know, yes, this, this force is pushing to the left. It's also, force, it's also pushing up. So it's going to be in the second quadrant. So the inverse tangent of uh, 1732 divided by 3000 is equal to 30 degrees from the horizontal leftward. In absolute units, this is 150 degrees. A graphical solution involves uh, recognizing the known lines of action and positions of the force. So here, we know the position and direction of the, for of the load at B. We also know the position and direction of the uh, reaction at A. Find where those two intersect and then connect the point D to the point of intersection. And then you copy those directions until they form a triangle. So these are just direction lines. They don't indicate how, how big the magnitude of any force is. To do that, you have to scale a known force. So in this case, you would either scale, and you can do that in AutoCAD uh, by using the scale command, so that the force in, that's in the same direction at B is 6,000 units long. Or you could use uh, your calculator and measure at the known force. And so you take that, take 6,000, divide by that measurement, and that gives you a factor, a multiplication factor. And then you take the measurements of the other sides and just multiply by that, that factor to get the sides. So this should agree with the analytical methods. And if you wanted to add the horizontal and vertical components, you could just measure the horizontal distance from this point to that point and the, and, and the vertical distance from uh, that point to that point. So the vertical distance from that point to that point would be the vertical component at D. Graphical methods are good methods to check analytical techniques.